Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. This is the kickoff of Season 14. How exciting is that? That's 14. Season 14. I We're know. In our 14th year, and, and Season 13 is behind us. I was reminiscing. <laughs> well, it's, it's nice to have Season 13 behind us. Yeah. Because Season 13 had a whole lot of challenges that came with it. Uh, but I was reminiscing with somebody today about the first season of Category 5. And oh, wow. how there wasn't a studio like this. <laughs> It was a webcam. A 320p webcam. We've come a long way. A long way. My name is Robbie Ferguson. It's nice to have you joining us. And I'm Jeff Weston. That guy. And I'm happy to be here. Me too. It's good times. Hey, make sure you click on that subscribe button. That's going to make sure that you get notified as soon as we go live or whenever we post new exciting videos. And for season 14, we've got a lot of exciting stuff so planned stuff. for you. Uh, we are booking ahead and uh, and we were talking before the show, like we are booked into December. That is how much content we have coming your way. And uh, it's just going to grow and grow. This, this year is going to be absolutely incredible. And I'm so very thankful to have you along with us. Uh, just a note as we kick off season 14, with season 13 behind us, mm -hmm. that means you can download the entirety of season 13 right. in 2K Ultra HD Ultra Widescreen Glory via BitTorrent. Head on mm -hmm. over to torrent.category5.tv. Last I checked, we had several seeds there, and you can download the entire season. Not only that, you can download all, all 13, seasons. All 13 seasons. You want to see season one where I was just sitting in front of a webcam? Crazy. Hey, the content has changed a lot since then, but so much so. Make sure you get over to torrent.category5.tv, download that, enjoy it, and see how far the show has come. Even in the past year, I mean, season 13 was a time of transition for us. Yes. Moving into this great new studio here at Studio E and all the changes that have come because of the COVID 19 pandemic, uh, which have really, you know, that's forced a lot of businesses to change the way they do things. And, that's and right. so we're doing the same. We're kind of evolving with this new landscape that uh, that is before us and learning how we can broadcast uh, in this kind of uh, in in a new broadcast realm in a way. I mean, interviews are different. We're not having people yep. into the studio as much. Uh, we uh, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff remotely and, and you're going to see some incredible stuff coming your way. And we're going to do our best to make it really, really good and really exciting. Speaking of. Uh Really, really good. I love your shirt. Thanks, man. Oh yeah, shirts are new. That's nice. That's snazzy. <laughs> and here I've just I've got my suit jacket. Oh, that's your thing. <laughs> that's your thing, man. That's like that's that's your look. Yeah. Uh, all right. All right. Well, hey, tonight we've got a fun show for you. Uh, we have our theme song that we've used since season one. And, and when mm -hmm. I started this show with that webcam in front of me and a Rode NT1 microphone in front of me, I actually played the theme song out a speaker so that the microphone would pick it Is up. Is that how you did we it? We didn't have the technology to, like we didn't have mixing consoles. and That's and, right. Oh, yes. So these days, however, we've stepped things up a little bit in the technology Just department. A little bit. Yeah, but it's time to freshen up the song as well. So today we're going to jump on Fiverr. We're going to find at least a few artists that we like. Okay. And we're going to see what it takes to get a retro 8-bit remix of the Category 5 theme song. That's coming right up. Stick around. Here I am on the bridge of the Category 5 TV network. This is where it all comes together. This is where the magic happens. This is where I do all the editing of Category 5 technology TV and everything else that goes into such a broadcast. We've been on the air for now while well, this kicks off season 14. And from seasons one through to season 12, we used a track called Cupid's Migration by my buddy Mick Rippon as our theme song. And for season 13, Mick himself remixed it for us. But here we are, season 14 kicks off today, and it's time to spice things up a little bit. 
So what are we gonna do? We're gonna get on Fiverr and find ourselves a remix. What I've done is I've uploaded it to my GitHub. So I've created a new repository called cat5tv underscore theme song, and it has the original .mp3 from Nick Rippon. And I've then cloned that to my server, so category5.tv slash cat5tv underscore theme song slash original.mp3 happens to be that same track. So we're going to be able to send this link to, uh, to anyone who is going to be producing on Fiverr. Let's get a peek here. Okay, so I've created a file here that is going to tell them that's where the file is. All right, a couple of key points here. Let's jump back over to Gold Wave. As far as the intro goes, backing up. All right, that's cool. So key points. Kind of builds right here. This is where it starts. But I want it to, I want our focus to be on this guy. All right, so that melody comes in at 29 seconds. Okay, so I've asked for that to be emphasized. Um, okay, I'm looking for a remix that uh, makes you want to, uh, that puts a, str a spring in your step. Give it a good groove. Breakdown starts at 114. It'll be for our intro of the webcast, so the build should be pretty pronounced, but happen rather quickly. I can always cut pieces up and move them around, but imagine a quick verbal intro where we say, here's what's coming up, and then our logo flies in and the melody drops etc. All right. Now, if you're not yet familiar with Fiverr, think of it like an online classified service. But instead of buying and selling goods, we're buying and selling within the gig economy. So you're hiring freelancers who will share their talent and their skills with you. Or if you want to sell your talent and skills within the gig economy, Fiverr is a place to do that. Now, as a partner of this video, you can actually use our link, and I would appreciate it if you would, because that will give us a bit of a kickback. But go to cat5.tv slash Fiverr, and that will take you to their website, and you will receive 20% off when you sign up and place your first order if you use our link, cat5.tv slash Fiverr. So let's head there. And I'm gonna do a quick search because I know what I'm looking for. I want chiptune. Oh, I accidentally put an S in there, but it corrected it for us. First option is $6.99. Let's give it a listen. <laughs> that is not a chiptune. Uh, Gangnam style. Uh, here's one for 50 bucks. That's pretty good, but let's say our budget is $50 altogether. So let's say we want to spend, because I want to have more than one to choose from. Let's say between one and $18. This is 14 bucks. Man, this is Lincoln Park in 8-bit. Get ready for it. My very first collab with Ozizen. This is happening. It starts with one thing. I don't know why. It doesn't even matter how hard you try. That's cool. Let's skip up to the chorus. Oh, you hear that? That is awesome. Let's check out what else they've done here. <laughs> Definitely a good vibe. Not what I'm looking for, but... Oh. 
that slide. Nice. Okay, I don't know how you're gonna get that on an 8-bit computer, that kind of flanging going on. So not quite authentic, but that is. <laughs> Let's just meld two eras together here. And beautifully done, really. I mean, so what I'm sensing from uh, Ozazen? Ozazen? is a, a real understanding for that chiptune feel, but then has kind of adapted some more modern uh, effects and some of the things that couldn't have been possible back in the chiptune days. Um, and I'm talking like the early days of 8-bit Nintendo and things like that. But I love that first track. So I'm gonna set this one aside, definitely for 14 bucks, that's worth going back to. This, this one we looked at, yeah. Okay, and this one's got Mario Bros, not 8-bit. That is. So again, we're melding two different eras here, and I'm not I'm not digging that. Oh, I love what Emmett has done here is that there's an echo that gives the sense of a more modern effect, but it is still using what was possible at that time. So we've created something, they've created something here that I haven't heard before, but surely is authentic. Okay, what else have they done? I love that, that insane vibrato. Again, that like bringing in this echo that is so authentic but yet so fresh. Oh, well done. Now we've got some stereophonics going on here that we didn't have in the 8 bit days, but I do like it. That's got that, you know, you're walking and you just got a spring in your step. It's a little bit low tempo for what we want, but it has that. Okay, now we're getting into elevator music. But what I'm hearing and what I'm liking is the ability to take authentic sounds and put a spin on them, like that echo effect, it's not delay. It is actually the, the instrument being re, resampled, re, repositioned, and, and uh, put into the sequence in such a way that it sounds like an echo, but it is just part of the sequence. I really, really like that. And while I want this to be an authentic 8-bit chip ting remix, I kind of like what they've done there with adding some stereophonics to it. I think that works really well and it brings it into 2020 in such a way that it still sounds authentic, but it has a bit more fullness than just being straight down the middle monophonic. So I dig that a lot. I'm going to keep that one open. Yeah. 
so authentic, but yet has like a really good groove, very modern sounding. That's awesome. Oh, halftime breakdown. Yes. Dude, you are a time traveler. Where were you in the Mod Tracker days? Seriously. Oh. Oh, I just want to hear it through to the end. Okay, literary squirrel knows what they're doing. Definitely a musician all through and through. All right, what else do you got for us? All right, not into that. That first track. Okay, this has got more, more of a vibe. Literary Squirrel, uh, again, has put one instrument fully on the left, and then the rest is kind of in space here. But that bass is... Now it's moved into the middle. Okay, that's pretty neat. Lots of demos. I love the arpeggio. kind of felt like it was going to build, and then it dropped off into like a churchy kind of sound to it, which I, d I didn't really like how it dropped down rather than building up. Okay, we've stepped too far outside of the genre. That first track from Literary Squirrel, though, was so good. That I and the price is seven dollars. That I have to hear what Literary Squirrel is going to do with our with our uh, theme song. Let's move on. There's such a fine line between fidelity and authenticity, and I think that that's what I'm hearing is that I I'm looking for something with higher fidelity, higher like production quality, but. The authenticity of that is fantastic. It's just too, like, ultra compressed. It's like the levels are just straight across the board. Just, it, it doesn't have the dynamics that I hope for. It's so cute. <laughs> I wasn't looking for cute though. Wow, he's playing it. I just imagine that most of these folks are sequencing, but he's actually playing it. Hello. Hello. My name is Gabriel Perez. Gabriel, nice to meet you. And produce music for your video games. Thank you. Play it for me. Okay, that is way too epic. <laughs> Can you imagine? Category five. <laughs> All right, there we go. Was that super tax? I gotta back that up. Is it just me or was that super tax? Let's jump back on that. Hello. Is it for your What's that? Watermarked in the background. That is super tux. Nice. Ten points for open source. But not quite the sound I'm looking for. Sorry. But it was nice to meet you, Gabrielle. No, I don't need Hello, lessons. I'm Nico, and what Hi, I'm Nico. offering you today is to create a fabulous video game remix of your song. Sounds good. It can be a 16-bit remix or an 8-bit remix. As I'll go with 8-bit. Samples I will show you now. Thank you.
trying to dig what Nico's doing. Yeah, not into that one. So those first three are kind of what I'm, you know, thinking. But I, I, Nico is seven dollars, so I want to give Nico a chance to try this out and see what he can come up with. So I'm going to go about placing the order. Let's see what these four musicians can come up with. This is one that has basic, standard, and premium. So basic is high quality audio file, commercial use, one instrument. Uh, one instrument isn't enough. Standard, a one minute long track, unlimited instrumentation, commercial use, one revision. 35 bucks though. It's gonna push us over budget. I can't wait to hear what Emnet comes out with, though. Let's do it. Okay, and on to Ozazen. I think with Ozazen, they, they've nailed it. They've nailed that, like, creating a track that has that authentic feel. And I don't really need to make much as far as comments go. I like what they're doing. So let's just move forward. If you're enjoying this so far, please give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate that very much. And in the meantime, I've placed all four orders. And when we come back, we're gonna hear our first results. Stick around. Um, so let's take a quick look at some of the ones that have been submitted so far. So Literary Squirrel, you remember, has an exceptional demo track and has sent me a couple of demos so far. And let's give a quick listen to the most current because the first one that he sent, the melody was a little bit off and I had said, um, maybe take a look at the melody, give a listen to my track, and then come back to me with a, with a new demo and see how things look. So let's give a listen here to what we've got so far from Literary Squirrel. You feel that? It's got that bob. Definitely nailed that kind of groove that I was looking for. Now the intro is getting a little bit long, but I can cut that up. No worries. Oh. Okay. So... What I'm hearing there is we're still having trouble nailing that lead melody. And what I realized through my conversation with Literary Squirrel is something that I never thought of before because I very much hear music by ear. I'm not a sheet music person at all. I don't understand notation at all. But when I hear a song, I can tinker it out on the, on the keyboard and come up with a melody. Like I can recreate the melody because I play by ear. But I feel like Literary Squirrel is not one of those people who plays by ear, but rather plays by sheet music, by notation. And so I had suggested maybe what I can do is I'm going to, I'm going to film my hands tinkering this out on the piano at home so that you can see the notes that that it should be because we're not quite there i can i can hear that he's he's hitting the 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 right like timing but the notes are off so let's let's listen see what i mean 
So he's just not hearing it the way that those of us who uh, play by ear hear music. So it's just a little bit different and it's kind of interesting, isn't it? Um, but he's nailing the, the, the overall kind of concept of what I was looking for. I really dig that groove. It feels good to like, I'm just kind of, I want to go like this as I'm listening to that. But as soon as the melody comes in, it should be the, uh, so in his case, let's, let's hear because he's playing it in a minor. I'm going to play it on the piano tonight. Let's switch to that clip. So the next one in line, let's see here, and I'm just on Fiverr here. So Mnet has submitted a couple of versions of the track as well. So let's give a quick listen. Again, we're just a little bit off on that melody. Just a touch. Nailed, like everything else, I'm really kind of digging that. Um, I am hearing it's a little bit too full for a chip tune. Like to be genuinely 8-bit, we were limited to four tracks back in the day. So there's a lot going on there when the beat comes in. There's like a that just feels a little bit too much for though for that era i feel like there's just too much going on so i'm going to request that uh that emnet kind of pulls that back a little bit i feel like he's really nailing kind of the reminiscence of the original but it's got to have something a little bit fresh there like it's a little bit i guess i would say on the fence of being a little too close to the original like if you listen to that i'm just going to push play again here Like that just feels a little bit too close to the original, almost like it's like a like just a a one to one um, kind of recreation. I, I'm looking for a bit more of a remix, so we'll see what uh, what Mnet can do with that. All right, so let's move on to our next one here, and that is Nico Igorovich. Nico, what do you have for us? Here we are. Here is Nico's submission. Let's give it a listen. took me literally and put footsteps. So we got literal footsteps there. Not exactly what I was talking about when I said, like, picture yourself taking a walk. Um, nailing a lot of it, but that lead melody, there was just that one point where it was just a little bit off. So I'd like you to kind of rework that a little bit, Nico. Um, and, and maybe what we'll do is instead of fading out the end there, just kind of end it on like a boom or some kind of a downbeat of some sort. I'm, I'm starting to hear that where, you know, so I'm envisioning how this is going to be as like an intro video or something like that. So I kind of want a little bit of a, a quieter intro and then the melody and then a vroom, so that it's right into, all right, welcome to the show and we're, we're ongoing. So maybe if Nico could implement a couple of those things, tweak that melody just a little bit. We definitely have that 8-bit vibe going. And I love that. Niko Agorovich is charging me, in total, 
after all my fees and everything else, $9.77 Canadian, which blows my mind. Let's give a listen to Nico's latest submission. Here it is. Much more reminiscent of the original, yet very much 8-bit. Yes. Nice. So then it's straight into the show. Welcome to the show. I'm Robbie. I heard one off note there in the melody line. See what he's done there? He's gone. It should be. So going down on that note. Um, so I'd like to have him take a quick peek at that. That's a really simple revision, though, I would expect. Dragging one note down. <laughs> As long as he's not actually playing this out on a keyboard and having to redo entire bits. But it seems to me like that's probably something that he can just pull together in the sequencer if he's sequencing. So here's hoping. Uh, all right. I've also got another submission from Emnet. And Emnet um, has been a joy to work with. And uh, all of these gents have been. Um, but Emnet is like so like right in tune with my mentality as far as like good customer support. He's always like, thank you so much for your great feedback and <laughs> all this kind of stuff. So like over the top, really good customer service, as well as a very talented musician. Um, let's give a listen to what he's done after I've kind of, so my requests have been with regards to like really kind of pulling back. Um, it was a little too busy because it felt like even though it had that 8-bit sound, it was doing so much that it was like 16 tracks versus the four that we were limited to. So let's see how he's been able to simplify that, pull it back. This is Emnet's new submission for us. Oh, nice. <laughs> Staccato. Love that arpeggio. That's fresh. Sweet. Oh, so, like, nailing the nuances of the original track while bringing it into the 8-bit era. I just want to see that, hear that ending changed to end on a downbeat. No fade outs. I know the original had that. And maybe that's unfair because that wasn't part of my original specs. But I'm going to ask Emnet to do that anyways and see what he comes up with. Um, because now as I'm hearing these demos, I start to understand more of what I'd like to hear. Because I'm hearing some of the things I like and some of the things I don't like. So it gives me a chance to really evolve my vision for this. Well, I'm sure you can feel it as well as I can. We are so close 
Now, I haven't yet received a submission from Ozazen. However, he has been in communication with me just to let me know that life is a little bit too busy right now and he's asked for an extension. So I'm fine with that. I understand that, you know, it can be really, really busy and I would rather lean toward um, quality than speed. So let's give him an extra day and see if he's able to come up with it for us. I'm perfectly fine with that. So I think as you go into Fiverr, you know, use use those dates that they give you initially as a bit of an arbitrary date. Unless you're really, really in a hurry, then make sure you are very, very upfront with the artists or whoever it is that you're hiring to say, look, I really need to achieve this deadline. Can you do it? Because I have found, I mean, like these are freelancers, people that are working from home in a lot of cases these days. And uh, and so it's a, you know, you've got to be upfront and honest. And I think I've been that and I've let Ozeza know, hey, if you need an extra day, take it. I really would like to have it done by then because I'd like to do this feature. Uh, but if you need more time, I'd rather lean toward quality. So take your time, take all the time you need and keep me posted basically. So, but in the meantime, I've received three other submissions and revisions since the last time I checked in with you. So first of all, Nico Igorovich has submitted his revision which is super, super simple. You remember this is the one where he went up one note where I wanted him to go down. So let's give a listen and just see if he nailed that. Yes. See? Such a simple little thing. One note and now it just feels like he has nailed it. So I'm going to approve that one. Literary Squirrel. Um, I'm curious if my clinking around on the piano is good enough. And he actually replied back and said, yes, I needed this. Thank you. Um, because I'm not able to notate music. I can't write out like the notes on sheet music because that's not me. And, and as I explained previously, like the best I can do is just tink away on the piano and hope beyond hopes that that's enough for you who plays by sheet music to be able to translate that. And I think you're able to see which keys I'm hitting just enough that you'll be able to nail that. So here's hoping. Now let's give a listen to Literary Squirrel's new submission, utilizing my tinking around on the piano to see if we've nailed that melody. <laughs> Nice. I love also what Literary Squirrel has done there. I hear it. I don't know if you hear it. Do you, do you spot this? Um, I was very much on the, like, on the beat. He's kind of like a, added like a ding, 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 ding. Like it's a bit more like a bit, I don't know, like skippy. Uh, I don't know the technical terms because I'm not a professional musician, but it's got that kind of like uh, swing to the to the melody a little bit. Listen again. See, he's hitting those like notes in kind of the in-between spots so that it gives it a bit more of a vibe, and I really dig that. Finally, the uh, oh, and so I've approved that, of course. I mean, he's nailed it. Well done. Um, Mnet has also submitted his ending to kind of wrap up our view of these three. I said to Mnet like. Everything else is perfect, but I just really want it to feel like it resolves. And right now it's just kind of, you know, fading out, dying off, and not really having a, a firm, solid ending. I, I really want that. So let's hear what Emnet has come up with. With no other direction than that, here it is. <laughs> Yes! Oh, that is so authentic. Like, I just beat the boss. I beat the final boss. And we're at the end of the show, and... Game over. I love it. Absolutely, absolutely stellar. Well done, gents. I'm also looking forward to Ozazen's submission, and I'll come back with that as soon as it's in. The final submission from Ozazen is in. Let's give it a listen. 
talk. Oh. Welcome to the show. This is what's coming up, blah, blah, blah. Kind of a little bit of a lull there. Ah, ha, ha. You catch that? You know what's awesome? It, now you watching this, you've seen that I love that halftime breakdown and I let Literary Squirrel know that I loved it when he did it. I didn't say any such thing to Ozazen and yet he's picked that up in the song and, and done that kind of halftime beat and I just absolutely love that. that breakdown from the original. So he's kind of changed it a bit, but I like it. Oh, nice. That is Ozazen's submission. Uh, you know what's really been a lot of fun throughout this process is having the opportunity to hear how four talented musicians on Fiverr have taken the same song and interpreted it ever so slightly differently. And each track is the same. It's got similarities. It's from the same original track, but it's completely different in so many ways as well. I don't think that I personally feel that there's a clear winner. I feel like I'm going to get use out of all four of these versions of our theme song. And in fact, as I went into this, I thought we were getting a new theme song for the intro of the show, but now I'm picturing like a new version for the extra with the credit roll and a new version when we transition. And we've got four different versions that are brand new for our theme song. But which one is your favorite? We had Nico Igorovich. Literary Squirrel. Mnet. And of course, Ozazen. Comment your favorite below, and don't forget to give us a like, big thumbs up, and a subscribe if you enjoyed this video. I greatly appreciate that. And don't forget, if you are thinking about trying out Fiverr, whether you need a new logo or somebody to design something for you, create some music, there are just unimaginable amounts of talent as far as like the level and the eclecticness of the talents that are available on Fiverr. Um, if you'd like to give it a try, you can save 20% on your first gig by using our link, cat5.tv slash Fiverr. And of course, that will also throw a little tip in our tip jar for us as well. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Here's what's coming up in the Category 5.tv newsroom. White Hat hackers had the run of Apple's corporate network for months. An optional update to Windows 10 breaks its ability to upgrade in future. Misleading pin puzzle ads have been banned in the UK. Apple's new iPhone lineup has been announced. And the BBC Microbit Mini Computer is getting a big upgrade, making it powerful enough for AI applications. Stick around, the full details and this week's Crypto Corner are coming up. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. From the newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. For months, Apple's corporate network was at risk of hacks that could have stolen sensitive data from potentially millions of its customers and executed malicious code on their phones and computers. Sam Curry, a 20-year-old researcher who specializes in website security, said that in total he and his team found 55 vulnerabilities. He rated 11 of them critical 
because they allowed him to take control of core Apple infrastructure and from there steal private emails, iCloud data, and other private information. Apple promptly fixed the vulnerabilities after Curry reported them over a three-month span, often within hours of his initial advisory. The company has so far processed about half of the vulnerabilities and committed to paying $288,500 for them. Once Apple processes the remainder, Curry said the total payout may surpass a half million dollars. Curry said in, an, said in an online chat a few hours after posting a $9,200 word to <laughs> 9,200 word write-up about their findings. If the issues were used by an attacker, Apple would have faced massive information disclosure and integrity loss. He explains attackers would have access to the internal tools used for managing user information and additionally be able to change the systems around to work as the hackers intend. Among the most serious risks were those posed by a wormable cross-site scripting vulnerability in a code parser that's used by the iCloud servers. Because iCloud provides service to Apple Mail, the flaw could be exploited by sending someone with an iCloud.com or Mac.com address an email that included malicious characters. The target need only open the email to be hacked. And once that happened, a script hidden inside the malicious email allowed the hacker to carry out any actions the user could when accessing iCloud in the browser. In a statement, Apple says, as soon as the researchers alerted us to the issues they detail in the report, we immediately fixed the vulnerabilities and took steps to prevent future issues of this kind. Based on our logs, the researchers were the first to discover the vulnerabilities, so we feel confident no user data was misused. Microsoft is warning that customers who install the optional KB4577062 update for Windows 10 versions 1903 and 1909 will encounter issues upgrading the newer to newer Windows 10 versions on some devices. As Microsoft says, after installing the optional update, users will receive compatibility warnings when trying to update the OS to newer versions if HTTP internet access for local system accounts is blocked using a firewall. While Microsoft doesn't mention that the compatibility issues also affect newer Windows 10 releases, users have also seen this warning when trying to upgrade to Windows 10 version 2004. Microsoft says that it is currently working to address this issue with a fix to be available in an upcoming Windows 10 release. Until then, the company advises customers if your device has access to HTTP blocked for local system accounts, to mitigate this issue, you can enable HTTP access for the Windows 10 Setup Dynamic Update DU using the local system account. After you have allowed access, you can restart the installation of the debate update and you should not see the warning. KB4577062 was released last month, with the main highlight being that it enables an Internet Explorer 11 notification to inform users about Adobe's Fla Adobe Flash's end of support coming this December. The UK Advertising Authority has put a stop to those pin puzzle ads, arguing that the frequent advertising misrepresents the gameplay of each title. The Advertising Standards Authority regularly weighs in what does and doesn't fly for game advertisements in the UK, meaning it's important for game developers to keep up with the authorities' decisions in order to ensure their own ads don't end up on the chopping block. The Playrix ads in the ASA's crosshairs this time around might be familiar to anyone that regularly dabbles in mobile free-to-play games or scrolls, scrolls through social media. Each depicts a puzzle that requires players to slide a variety of pins in a certain order to save a cartoonish character from certain doom. Only as the ad regulator points out, the gameplay seemingly featured in those advertisements is nothing close to what's actually found in the bulk of the Match 3 games they're advertising. The complaint itself sprung out of two particular Facebook advertisements, one for homescapes and one for gardenscapes that followed the pin-pulling format and aimed to lure would-be players with phrases like, only 5% can solve this and think you can do better, among others. In response to ASA's investigation, Playrix argued that the puzzle shared thematic, thematic similarities with the gameplay and narrative players could expect in the actual games. The ASA, however, isn't having it, making it clear that those who click the ad and install the app are expecting gameplay that reflects what is shown in the ad. 
The authority has decreed that Playrix's ads are misleading despite Playrix's inclusion of a disclaimer that not all images represent actual gameplay. The offending advertisements can no longer run in the UK, and Playrix has been told to ensure their future ads actually represent the gameplay of the titles they are linked to. Hopefully we'll see these annoying false ads stopped in other regions as well. I, I like that the UK authority has gotten in on this because this type of ad has driven me nuts for a while now. <laughs> Anyone else seen this? Like, Anyone else fallen for it? I see them all the time, but I find that YouTube is, per or not YouTube, sorry, Facebook is particularly bad for false advertisements. Like so many computer or um, app games that I see, they're like, oh, check out this you know, this is the game, you gotta play it. And it's not the game, it's it's video from all. another video game. Isn't that nuts? It's Well, it's almost like they've created like a video an yes. animation. Uh, I don't know if you've fallen for this, I actually installed the game when the ads started. Oh, okay. Because I thought, oh, that looks really fun. Yes. The ads make it look really, really fun. The game was nothing. Nothing. Nothing, Nothing like, like it. Yeah. What the ad showed. And in fact, it was like a really bad topographical kind of like war simulation. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything? Yeah, absolutely. Completely misleading. I, it's unfortunate, though, that it's only the UK authority that's gotten in on this. I think. Well, I don't know that it is, but I mean, the UK. Well, as far as the ruling. That's, yeah, that's yeah. what we're hearing, anyways. That's what's breaking the news right now. I hope that it, it catches all across the globe because these kind of ads drive me nuts. Oh, yes. And and as as a father whose kids are now getting into apps and games, yeah. they see these ads and they're like, "Ooh, dad, I want to download that. I want to play it." Yeah. But I'm now questioning going, is what they're seeing actually the game? Yeah. And and that makes me think, I mean, it's good that the authority is putting their foot down because if like where's the line? Yeah. If if they are allowed, if they were allowed to post these ads, that are completely not what they're advertising. What, what's the line? What could it be that my kids are actually installing? And I say my kids, because that's the example that yeah. you use, but I mean, it annoyed me. Yeah. Because I was laying there on the couch thinking, this looks cool, I'm gonna install this. Could you imagine know. if we advertise as a tech show on Cat5, but really we're a car show? I couldn't imagine that, Jeff. Like, that would just drive you all nuts. You tune in, it's like, I've got, got to hear about cryptocurrency. To be fair, no. we Trim. have Linux tech show and people say, why are you talking about Windows? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So to be fair. But those are close enough. <laughs> yes. Well. But yeah, I, 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 false advertising for apps and games has gotten so crazy. Yeah. There needs to be something done about it. And so yeah. I'm glad to see this story. Me too. Me it's too. good. All right. Apple's new iPhone lineup has been announced and the BBC Microbit mini computer is getting big upgrades, making it powerful enough for AI applications. Becca has these stories coming up. Plus Robert's here with the Crypto Corner. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the world of cryptos and welcome back to the Crypto Corner. I hope you're well. Today I've got two different things for you. You probably heard that the Bank of England started warning yesterday their customers that interest rates might go negative uh, next year. And most economists are warning that that's a very bad sign for the economy. And uh, at the same time, I would like to show you something out of our industry, which is saying that uh, crypto banks are going to swallow fiat banks in three or even ye uh, less years. And why is that case? <clears throat> because crypto banks can compete on a complete different level. They have offer by far bigger products than a traditional bank can do because everything is being reinvented, as you saw in the last few presentations that I did. And also the cost. I mean, they don't have any buildings and no employees. It's all software that's doing this year. So they, the traditional banks have got absolutely no chance against our crypto banks. And so that's going to be a very interesting development, uh, which is great because it gives you, uh, as the user, a lot of independency um, in an area which is desperately needed. And as one can see, <clears throat> the increase in users and in value uh, of money that has been locked into DeFi is increasing steadily even at this moment of time where we had some down uh, trend in the in the industry 
The other thing I'd like to show you is so-called non-fungible tokens. Non-fungible tokens are assets that uh, have different prices. A good example is artwork. If you buy uh, Picasso, then every Picasso has got different price depending on provenance and, and, and there are many factors. And uh, these things are coming up now in our world too. And as you can see here, there is somebody that's uh, Trevor Jones that uh, created this piece here. It's digital, so it's not a physical piece of art. Uh, and it's called the Picasso's Bull in Bronze. He created 25 of those units, uh, started selling them at $200 a piece, and he's now making, or well, the current owner is making $4,200 by uh, selling that. And um, this is something that will grow bigger and bigger. It's got the huge advantage that with these things, you don't need a certificate of authenticity or you don't need any provenance because that's all part of the blockchain. So you don't need to have that separately. Uh, you know where that painting is coming from up to the originator. Another example is uh, land. And I've got here an example called Decentraland, which is a virtual world with streets. And then you've got districts like the financial district or the... the uh, Asian district or the African district and you can buy properties on it. The light blue ones are the ones you are currently able to buy. And this one that I chose that was sold in <clears throat> 2019 for 1.2 million uh, mana, that's the currency in this land, which is around uh, $180,000 and, um, and at the current price of 8 uh, cents or 7, 8 cents uh, for per, uh, per mana. This is something that why is this so interesting? It's not for kids, no. Um, it can be, but uh, the interesting part is here. You probably remember the presentation I did on the Cardano Summit a few months ago, which was completely virtual. And those things will happen here. So you'll have like a university and you then walk into the building, you see the different halls, you've got everything that you see also in a traditional university. You'll have that also here from that aspect, that point of view, or conference uh, uh, halls, uh, fashion districts. Uh, we, we've seen that also in, in other areas. So this is something that will happen. This has been developed for many years. It's still in, in its infancy, but it, uh, it will come. And the link to the traditional world is also there. And I'm showing you this example here. Although one has to be careful because there is a physical asset, which is in this case the property, and you don't have a real link between the digital property and the physical property because you can't put a building in, onto the blockchain. So the law has to change in order for these assets to be really um, part of a decentralized economy. But here in this case, you can buy a property um, uh, 10048 Creighton Boulevard, uh, Creighton Street for $65,944. And the token price is $50. So you can buy part of a property uh, without ever having been there, without knowing what area that is, and so on. And that property is being rented at the moment, and you then get a part of that uh, rent uh, revenue. Um, it's an idea. They're, they're trying it. A lot of properties have been sold this way already uh, because it's an interesting investment. So as you can see, there are a lot of things coming on to this market too. Uh, it's a different market than the DeFi market, of course. Um, there is a website called OpenSea, which is, I find, the best one to find out uh, where to find these non-fungible tokens and just play around with it. Yeah, I recommend it to you in the DeFi sector. Just play around with it. Just buy some DeFi tokens, uh, get a loan, um, and just learn. And the same you should do here, although it's all not financial advice, as you know, but it's just what I did. Uh, so Rarible or X-Infinity, uh, Super Rare is, is a great website. You just click on this here and you're here. So it's a directory where you can see what's going on and how what art is currently being sold or what are they currently selling. So um, that's it from me uh, this week. I hope you learned something. I hope you found it interesting. And I'm really looking forward to see you next week again. So um, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye. Thanks, Robert. Just a reminder that we're not providing financial advice, but only sharing what's happening in the cryptocurrency market. Always remember that the cryptocurrency markets are ever-changing and always volatile. Now back to Becca in the newsroom. Thank you, Robbie. 
Apple unveiled four new phones Tuesday which are equipped for faster technology with 5G wireless networks. The pandemic temporarily paralyzed Apple's overseas factories and key suppliers, leading to a delay of the latest iPhones from their usual late September rollout. The company also closed many of its U.S. stores for months because of the pandemic, depriving Apple of a prime showcase for its products. Now the new lineup has been unveiled. The iPhone 12, 12 mini, 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max range in price from about $979 Canadian to upwards of $1,550. The tech giant said the new phones will also be more durable. In a move that may annoy some consumers, Apple will no longer include charging adapters with new phones. The company says that will mean smaller, lighter boxes that are more environmentally friendly to ship. Apple, however, separately sells two models of power adapter, which are likely a required purchase since the included cable is not compatible with the traditional USB-A style wall wart. Apple has one of the most loyal and affluent customer bases in the world, which has many analysts betting that the next wave of phones will sell well. The iPhone remains the foundation of Apple's business. Apple boasted about the 5G capabilities and brought in Verizon CEO Hans Vestberg to champion the carrier's network. 5G is supposed to mean much faster speeds, making it quicker to download movies or games, for instance. But finding those speeds can be a challenge. While telecom operators have been rolling out 5G networks, significant boosts in speed are still uncommon in much of the world, including the U.S. The iPhone models unveiled Tuesday will launch at different times. The iPhone 12 and 12 Pro will be available starting October 23rd. The Mini and the Pro Max will follow on November 13th. Okay, I, I, gotta, I gotta ask, why would they not include a charger? They're saying it's more environmentally friendly, Jeff, but the fact is is that you got to buy the charger anyways. Yeah, it's going to come in separate packaging. Yeah, this is why uh, there's a bit of an uproar about uh, this. I think it's a total price grab. <laughs> Big, and, and I mean, <laughs> Apple? I, I know, right? Come Shocking. But I mean, Apple phones are already, any Apple product is already crazy expensive as it is now. Yeah. Um, now they're going to make you pay for an, a charger sure they are like this is ridiculous that is supposed to be commonplace just like a pair of wired headphones you say that but there are times jeff when i think like when i buy a monitor for my computer yep why do they throw in a d-sub cable it makes no sense fair enough and that to me is wasteful uh, sure right right but you don't charge your monitor through a d-sub cable Right, but w there will come a time when they're right, when everyone does have a USB-C charger that's a fast charger. Yeah. R you know, but because we all use USB-A a, a lot, I, I generalize, but a lot of us use wall warts that have like a USB-A, which is the, you know, the fat thin one that you have to try three times before you plug <laughs> it in. That's right. Yeah, um, but but there will come a time when we all have USB-C chargers. Yes, and I know that that's the... That's the goal. Like they're trying to transition everybody onto the same connection. Yeah. Um, but still, it seems kind of ridiculous that you'd buy a phone without a charger. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I don't know. That's the story. And, and the other thing is, <laughs> is four different models of phone. Like you got, you got the Pro, you got the Pro Max, you got the Mini. The Mini is smaller. Like, it's the same. <laughs> I poke fun. It's like the same I'm... nuts and bolts, just different size. Yeah. Like essentially, like ah well, <sighs> no, I make. It, it, I mean, it, good for them for for bringing out a new product during a pandemic. I mean, that's great. Yeah, it's hard uh, for it, for companies to manufacture right now. It really sure, is. absolutely, it is. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, the fact that they've they've had shortage of supply because of yeah. factory shutdown and all that, and the fact that they can roll this out, that's great. Uh, I just. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a fanboy, you can tell. <laughs> no, I, I am very anti Apple. All right. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just, ugh, I mean, if. Ugh. If I bought I'm like, an, oh, where's he going with this? If I bought like, an Android oh. phone without a charger, I would probably lose it in the store. But if you had an Android phone, it's USB A to probably USB C. Yeah. So you're, you're fine because you have that yes. charger already. You're probably. But that's the issue. So 
we'll still. just we'll just leave it at that and head back to Becca. <laughs> the BBC Microbit mini computer used by millions of school children around the world is receiving its first major update since 2016. Formerly a BBC-led project, it is now led by a foundation that aims to make coding accessible for children. The BBC Microbit is designed to inspire young people, providing the key knowledge, understanding and skills to become creators, not just users of technology. The latest version of the Microbit has all the features of the original and some fantastic extras, so you can learn and play in new and exciting ways. The new model includes a speaker and microphone, as well as a capacitive touch sensor. The device will be released in November with prices starting at £11.50, a bit more than $14 US. Gareth Stockdale, chief executive of the Microbit Educational Foundation said, the purpose of the Microbit is to help children unlock their creative potential and learn how to shape the world around them. He believes that learning coding and computational thinking can enhance skills that will help them in their careers in the 21st century. Since its launch, the Microbit has been designed for education, with an estimated 25 million children learning computer skills on the device in over 60 countries. The previous model launched in the UK in 2016, with the BBC giving away a free Microbit to every grade 7 student. It is now used in most secondary schools as well as primary schools, universities, and libraries. The Foundation has also donated 5,000 devices to families in the UK to help with homeschooling during the COVID-19 pandemic. The Microbit is a palm-sized circuit board with an array of 25 lights that can be programmed to show letters, numbers, and other shapes, and a Bluetooth chip for wireless connectivity. As the hardware is most powerful, sorry, is now powerful enough to run machine learning systems, the Foundation has plans to expand into this area in future. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.TV Newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And if you appreciate what we do, become a patron at patreon.com slash category 5. From the Category 5.TV Newsroom, I'm Becca Ferguson. Well, that is episode one of season 14 in the can, Jeff. I love it. We did it. It's a good we show. made it through the show. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the technology is coming together, and, and it's been quite a go. As we mentioned, yeah. season 13 was, uh, you know, it was a lot of change and a lot of transition, and now things are working a lot better because we took those couple of weeks in order to dedicate some time here at the studio to getting things set up the way that they should be. So I'm very, mm -hmm. very thankful to have you here. Thank you to our supporters, our patrons at patreon.com slash category five. It means so much to know that you're supporting us, and of course, we give you some exciting content as well. So if you enjoyed today's show, for example, just know that there's about another half hour's worth of content that you didn't get to see that is there and available exclusively for patrons. Oh, that's like some of the best stuff. Sounds fun, eh? Behind the scenes. <laughs> also, you can follow us on Twitter. It's at Category 5 TV, and I hope you will. Have a wonderful week, everyone. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.